Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes, and today we're looking at the top 10 new, free-to-play low-spec games to play in 2021 and beyond. Don't worry, I've heard you loud and clear. You only want new, free-to-play low-spec games, and that's exactly what I'm showing you today. Because everybody has heard of low-spec games like Team Fortress 2, CSGO, Unturned, Valorant, and so on. So today, we're looking at new games to play right now. Now, if you're excited for this video, make sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more videos on free-to-play games as only 12% of you guys are subscribed. And tell me in the comment section below what is your favorite free-to-play or low-spec game that you're playing right now, and I'll heart react the best comments. But with that said, let's get straight into it. Starting off this top 20 is a game that is getting a lot of traction right now, a free-to-play low-poly first-person shooter called Polygon. This game visually looks like an upscaled and upgraded Crunker.io, but the gameplay is more hardcore like Escape from Tarkov with its quick time to kill and leaning mechanics, along with its huge maps and large-scale fights with up to 32 players. Weapons are customizable to your liking and there are a lot of weapons to choose from and overall the game is just a load of fun. Now the visual are the thing that really separates Polygon from the pack with its very low poly look, but it also means this game is quite easy to run with only an i3 processor and a GTX 460 beam required. Lots of positive reviews on Steam, highly underrated game, check it out. Now for you low spec MMO fans out there, Soul Worker is for you, a third person MMO RPG with a unique anime style. You play as a soul worker and your goal is to protect the world, utilizing many unique combat styles and skill combinations to take on your opponents. There's over a hundred player versus environment dungeons and tons of PvP zones to explore, which is weaved in between the captivating story. Now on top of all of that, Soul Worker's anime graphic style is fantastic for people with bad PCs. Only an Intel Core 2 Duo processor is required, along with 2 gigs of RAM and a GTX 440, which is some incredibly low system requirements. Next up is Alliance of Valiant Arms, the free-to-play shooter that is making a 2021 comeback. Now, if you're around in the days of Combat Arms, War Rock, Operation 7, Crossfire, and so on, you would recognize AVA, a military FPS with stiff mechanics but addicting gameplay. Despite being an older title, Alliance of Valiant Arms is filled to the brim with nostalgia and is a very fun game to play. Now given that AVA is the relaunch of a 2008 shooter, the system requirements are very very low for 2021 standards. All that is needed is an Intel Core 2 Duo, 2 gigs of RAM and an Intel HD 3000 which is perfect for low spec shooter fans out there. However, the reason this game is in a lower spot though is because of the many delays for this re-release, but a beta is around the corner and a full release should be soon after that. Low spec and card games go hand in hand, and Storybook Brawl is a prime example. You start a match with 7 other players and face off in 1v1 rounds, with the goal to be the sole winner. There's over 30 different heroes to command and hundreds of cards to play with, so there's always something to go and try out. Like many of the card games on this list today, Storybook Bro is incredibly easy to run, and this is mainly due to the cute but simple graphics. Processor-wise, you just need anything that is 1 GHz or higher, 512 megabytes of RAM, and a 1 GB VRAM graphics card, which is very low requirements indeed, so basically any PC can play this. Merlot Above the Sun is a fantastic indie game. It's an action platforming hack and slash game done by fourth year students of Digipen Bilbao. The game revolves around a story where Merlot's home is gone, her friends have been kidnapped, and it's up to you to play as her and save everybody. The gameplay is relatively simple. A basic attack, jump, and dodge is all you have to go through this game. The true joy in Merlot though is going through the fantastically designed levels and great visuals. It's a short game for sure and the puzzles are fairly basic, but it's more so about the journey for this one. Now given Merlot is a student project, it's not the most optimized. However, given the minimum specs are a mobile i3 processor and a GTX 550, I think you should be able to run it without a problem. 
Risk Global Domination is very simple. It's the classic board game Risk, but on the PC and it's multiplayer. It's quick and easy to get into, the graphics are bright and straightforward, and it captures the essence of Risk perfectly. Now in regards to the system specifications, Risk is by far one of the easiest games to run on this list. All that is needed is a 2 core processor and 2 gigs of RAM. That's it. Next up is Caliber, a free to play shooter made by Wargaming, the same people who made World of Tanks. Now Caliber is a third person tactical shooter, similar in kind to games like Rogue Company but with a bit more of a tactical edge. This is in part because of the third person perspective, the other is due to the bountiful amount of classes and operators in this game. Caliber has four classes, Assault, Support, Medic and Marksman, and each character, known as an Operator, fits into one of these classes. Each Operator is different, they have special abilities, special characteristics, and they're really what gives this game its variety. Gameplay wise, it's the standard affair that we've seen from military shooters before. Solid movement with emphasis on tactical gameplay using cover. But the mode shakes things up a little as you've got both PvP and PvE, meaning you can always hop into the action. Given Caliber's graphics aren't the most spectacular, it makes sense that its system requirements are relatively low, as you only need a 4th gen i3 processor and a GeForce GT 520 to get it running. Shop Titans is an RPG shopkeeper simulation game, which is quite a specific genre indeed. You craft powerful equipment, stock your shop and sell to heroes, all to make money and improve your store. Now in this game, you start from scratch, build your store from scratch, and customise it to your heart's desires, which is also changing how your shopkeeper looks too. Now given this game's name, a big part of it is about the items, in particular the crafting of weapons, shields, boots and more. You can also upgrade and enchant these items with tons of combinations. Outside of the shop, you can go and quest with your heroes to gain valuable items, and also team up with guilds to become even stronger. There's tons of ways to progress. Now given the relatively simple 3D graphics, it makes sense that Shop Titans is incredibly easy to run. All you need is 2 gigs of RAM and 600 megabytes of storage. That's it. A quick one for you Tycoon fans out there, as the amazing open source remake of Transport Tycoon Deluxe called OpenTTD is now available for free on Steam. OpenTTD is a business simulation game in which players earn money by transporting passengers and cargo via road, rail, water and air. For the fans of the original Tycoon games in the 90s, this one is going to tickle your fancy, as the classic UI and gameplay has been recreated, but it also adds larger maps, more building options and a ton more features. This goes without saying, but yes, you can play this game, since on its Steam page it says processor, yes, and memory, 256 megabytes of RAM. This is by definition a very low spec game. Causa Voices of the Dusk is a unique turn-based strategy card game with some interesting game mechanics that no other game has. Getting straight into it, the main one is around sacrificing your cards which raises your cause, but those cards aren't gone as you can bring them back later on in the match in a much more powerful form to achieve some hugely strategic plays. Adding the leaders and their powerful abilities and there is a lot of choice to play and a lot of combinations, especially as you always need to be thinking ahead. A really big part of Causa is the accessibility. On top of normal multiplayer duels, there's also an in-depth campaign which is perfect to train your skills or just to play by yourself. Top it off with a ranked mode where you can gain seasonal rewards and Causa really does have a lot packed into it. The graphics of course are the cherry on top. Causa has a lovely art but it isn't too flashy and it's really easy to run, hence why it's on this list. A cool i3 processor, 4 gigs of RAM and a GeForce GT 640-R is all you need to get started, which are very easy to hit requirements. Alpaca Stacker is a 3D adventure platformer where you play as Paz, a kind alpaca dedicated to helping their animal friends. This game is quite a short experience, totaling around 10 minutes, but it's the journey that counts as you soak in the adorably cute environment, characters and music. It just feels like a really chill and beautiful Nintendo game. What is also really nice to see is the really low system requirements as basically anybody can run this game. All that is required is an Intel Dual Core processor, 2 gigs of RAM and an Intel Graphics 4400, so yes, you can run this game. 
Next up on this list is Cards, the World War II card game. Cards combine traditional card game elements with some interesting concepts inspired by not only classic strategy games, but also actual battlefield tactics. How this translates in game is that each card is either classed as infantry, tank, artillery or aircraft, and each has specific power points and counters, giving you a huge amount of options to win the match. Now graphically this game is fantastic, each card is detailed and looks awesome, but also adding the animation and the experience is quite immersive. This is reflected in the system requirements, as cards literally has none besides 5GB of storage, making this one of the lowest spec games on this list. King of Crabs has been described as Fortnite with crabs, and for good reason, as it's a battle royale game, but with crabs and also no shrinking arena. The goal of King of Crabs is simple, scrap, scavenge and slaughter your way to become the King of Crabs with up to 100 players in a game. Despite being a wacky concept, there is a decent amount of depth as you unlock a large variety of crabs and discover very advanced skills, along with collecting new skins. There's also a large array of weapons to choose from and a ton of different modes to keep you occupied. Now King of Crabs is definitely one of the lower spec 3D games on this list. You only need a dual core processor, 512 megabytes of RAM and a GeForce 8800, so basically anybody can run this. Purgatory is cool, it's a visual novel about passing time in an afterlife where nothing really matters. What you do is explore a point and click world and get to know its inhabitants, it's just a bit of cute fun. Now being a visual novel it goes without saying that this is a low spec game, just make sure you have 200 megabytes of free space and you're good to go. One game that I absolutely love to feature is Helltaker, the puzzle arcade game with an amazing soundtrack to boot. The concept is hilarious, complete levels and collect demon girls to expand your harem. This concept is hilarious and really fun as the game is a treat to play. You have a select number of moves per round so you need to plan out your approach and it's addicting trying to crack the puzzles. Now graphically Helltaker is fantastic, the art is amazing to see and the animation is great too and overall it's visually top notch. Now leading on with this though, these graphics are not difficult to run at all. Most games have in-depth system requirements, Helltaker just says 350 megabytes of hard drive space and that means any PC can play this. Helltaker really is the complete package and it's actually made by a single developer too. It's definitely an indie gem on the Steam store and I recommend you guys check it out. Gwen is one of the best card games out right now, and especially on Steam. Based on the Witcher universe, Gwent sees you battle in fast-paced online PvP duels that combine bluffing, on-the-fly decision making and careful deck construction. If you've played Hearthstone and the like, you'll easily pick up Gwent, but it's also easy to digest if you're not a card game fan. Pay to win is basically non-existent as well. While you can pay for cards with real life money, you can also just collect new cards as you play the game. Furthermore, the Steam release of Gwent features full crossplay and account sync with other versions of the game, meaning you're able to compete with players on mobile as well as carry over all your items and progress between different platforms. Now despite looking better than a lot of games on this list, Gwent has surprisingly low requirements with only an Intel Celerion processor, 4 gigs of RAM and a GeForce GT 730 being needed, a testament to how optimised this game is. Goose Goose Duck definitely looks like free to play among us, however in reality this game really improves on the formula and adds a lot of content. Now the concept for this game is simple, you and your crew on the SS Mother Goose must work together to keep your ship in tip top shape, however the ducks on enemy team are disguised and out to take apart your squad one by one and it's up to you to go and vote those ducks out. There are 4 plus game modes and over 20 sub roles, which really makes this game fun by bringing in a lot of different goals and strategies. Furthermore, you can play with up to 16 players which really fleshes out these roles and it's just a really chaotic time. Now like Among Us, the cartoonish style means anyone with any PC can play this game, as you need at minimum an Intel Core 2 Duo, 2 gigs of RAM and integrated graphics, which is incredibly low specs. Super Animal Royale is the next game on this list, a 64 player 2D top down battle royale shooter. The battle royale concept is tried and true, and this one is no exception, you just hop in game, pick up powerful weapons, armour and items and try to win, but this time it's in 2D. 
The movement and gunplay is super smooth and reminds me of a high quality flash game. And then you add in the big map, lots of points of interest and lots of guns and it's just a great combo. The 2D top down style of Super Animal Royale comes with a huge benefit. The system requirements are crazy low. You only need a Core i3 processor, yes even the older ones, 3 gigs of RAM and 256 megabytes of video memory, so you could play this literally on any laptop. Yes my friends, next up is Muck, the adventure survival roguelike game made by Danny. Now Muck, like Minecraft, drops you into a randomly generated map where you need to collect resources, find items and build a base, all with the goal of defeating the final boss which you can do both solo or multiplayer with friends. Unlike most games in 2021, Muck isn't concerned with its visuals. They're basic, wacky and fun and that puts the focus on the gameplay but the visuals are also so so cool to look at. Now in Muck you build tools and then a base. You explore the map and survive night after night as the difficulty goes up and up. On top of this you also have to fight bosses every few nights and this really changes up the dynamic. Now given that Muck is a Danny game, of course the system requirements are very very low. Only a dual core processor, 2 gigs of RAM and an Intel HD 520 is required to play this game. Let's give a very quick mention to Crunker.io. I talk about this game a lot but it's super fun. It's fast paced, slide hopping, first person shooter with tons of classes, tons of weapons and a lot of mods. And this game is very very low spec. Low spec enough that you only need a 2.33 GHz processor, broadband internet connection and 100 megabytes of space to go and run this game on 60 FPS which is insane. Now if you want to play this game and you've never signed up before and you want to help support the channel, please go and click my referral link in the description below. It's the best way to support the channel. You sign up completely free and it helps me a ton. So if you guys are interested in Crunker, please go and click that link. But with that said my friends, let's go and check out the number one spot. Coming in at the number one spot, we have Splitgate, the Halo and Portal influenced first person shooter that is going to be one of the most popular free to play games out right now. It's simple, use portals, go around the map, pick up weapons, shoot your enemies and have fun. The graphics look great, the UI is clean, there's heaps of modes and maps and overall the game is awesome. But for how good this game looks, the system requirements are crazy low. You only need a dual core CPU, 6 gigs of RAM and the GTX 660 to go and play this game. 